All right, welcome back everyone to Plant-Based Kidney Health. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. My partner is Michelle Krosmer. So Michelle, today's question is, is people who have chronic kidney disease, should they be taking protein supplements? Great question. We get asked this all the time. So I am going to break my answer into two separate categories. The reason being that um, people with kidney disease that are on dialysis have different protein needs than someone with kidney disease that is not on dialysis. So um, let's start with people who have kidney disease, um, stage one through five that are not on dialysis. And typically these people are following a lower protein diet in order to help slow or delay that progression of kidney disease. So in this population of people, I generally recommend that they don't take protein supplements. And the re main reason being is that it's not needed um, to follow a low protein diet. You can generally get all of that protein from the food that you're eating. It's usually easy. Sometimes it's hard even just to limit the protein in the diet. And protein supplements provide very concentrated amounts of high protein. And so it's hard to stick with that lower protein diet in this population of people. Now, of course, if someone is you know, very malnourished, they simply can't meet their protein needs. They may be their elderly, maybe they're very sick. I mean, these are, of course, our special considerations where they might need a protein supplement in order to meet their needs. But for the most part, people with kidney disease, one through five, not on dialysis, typically don't need to supplement protein in their diet. Um, before we get to dial dialysis, I also want to throw in there, you know, we usually then will get follow-up questions about, well, what about people post-transplant or what about people with kidney stones? So um, post-transplantation, not in the acute phase, but in the chronic phase post-transplantation, you're, it's also recommended to avoid high or excessive protein intake. So for the most part, this population wouldn't need a protein supplement either, assuming they can get it in their diet and get it from whole foods that come along with <clears throat> other benefits like fiber, vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And same thing with kidney stones, avoiding um, very high protein intake is also a recommendation. And so same thing, protein supplements usually aren't needed or recommended in that population. For people who have kidney disease and they are on dialysis, whether it's peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis, they do have higher protein needs. They have higher protein needs for multiple reasons. There's more inflammation, more catabolism, more lean muscle mass is lost. Um, you lose some amino acids and protein just through the process of dialysis. So this population does have higher protein needs. So does that mean that they should supplement protein? Maybe. Um, I think it's still always best to first look at your diet and see if you can get enough protein to meet those higher needs from whole foods. But if not, and oftentimes, you know, people on dialysis, they need, uh, you know, kind of a little boost to protein and to get it in supplement form, then I definitely think that that can, that fits in and you should be working with your renal dietitian. That's in your part of your clinic to do that. Um, but then it comes down to what form of protein supplementation. I think the main thing to be cautious of is protein has become this very popular you know, kind of this fad thing now is high protein and protein this. And I've seen protein added to cookies and chips and popcorn and all this junk food, but they put protein in it. So then they can put on the label that it's high protein. Those are not the types of, you know, protein supplementation that you would want. You can start first with, okay, are you having anything that's easy to add a protein um, powder type of thing that is not going to add, you know, a bunch of sugar, or a bunch of salt or other things like that. So, um, and typically I would recommend a plant protein powder over an animal one. Um, that could be pea protein. That could be a uh, hemp protein powder. It could be soy. Sometimes it's a combination or a blend of them. So it could be things like, um, I've seen a pea protein blend with a pumpkin seed. And those are things you're looking at. You can add it to a smoothie. You can add it to oatmeal. You can add it to um, a yogurt. You can um, you know, find ways to add that or mix it with water, whichever way you want to do it. But that's where I would start. And then if someone on dialysis needs additional calories um, on top of more protein, that's when you can look at some of those protein drinks that are already um, made. And then it comes down to which one. Again, there are ones that are kidney specific, especially if someone does have electrolyte abnormalities. So like they have high potassium, um, they need to limit sodium. 
So there are the kidney specific ones, but I think it's important to look at the amount of added sugar that is in these protein supplements, sugar, alcohol, some of these things can cause more, you know, diarrhea or GI discomfort. So it's really important to look at that. And then it's ideal if you can find one that has some sort of prebiotic fiber added to it. So at least the um, fiber is helping to offset usually it's some sort of like corn syrup or brown rice syrup that's used in those types of types of supplements. Um, the other thing to be careful with when you're choosing a protein supplement, whether it's a powder or it's a drink, is if there's any veggie or fruit blends in the supplement. And the reason you want to be mindful of that is because sometimes those can be very concentrated amounts of potassium and or they simply don't provide how much potassium is in it. And that's what we really want to know with the protein supplement is how much protein is this giving, how much potassium, phosphorus, some of those other minerals and electrolytes and vitamins um, for people with kidney disease, and then how much added sugar and kind of added junk is in it. And if we can keep that as minimal as possible, then for this dialysis population, protein supplementation might be needed. Um, but again, the perk of um, it, dialysis and, and protein supplementation is there's a registered dietitian as part of the dialysis unit. And so you can talk with them about ways to get more protein in your diet, whether it's from an actual supplement or just um, whole food forms. So I hope that answers that for you guys. And if you have any questions, then leave them in the comments and we'll see you next time.